Welcome everyone back to Ragnorum with Mission Nobody. Cue the intro. See, you thought we had an intro, but now nah, we broke in this place. So we continue on what we're doing. So we got a new boy here called Kimper Nickus. Look, don't ask questions, just let me join your colony. I am Kimper Nickus, <laughs> and I'm a clone. My commander died, they all died, only I survived. We arrived there a few weeks ago. Our captain was weird, he only made boots. And when we started complaining, he glitched out and died. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I stepped, well, I stepped on them while they were sleeping and they all died. Alright. This, this right here was my whole entire first playthrough of Ragnorium. <laughs> ah, that's classic clone behavior. So stupid. So, Commander, what do you think? Does your colony need extra hands? Let me think about that for a second. Hmm. I can harvest trees, I can build. It's all good stuff that you would expect a good clone to do. Battle. Uh, yeah, just leave for good and never come back. We don't need none stomping clones in our colony. Leave now before I change my mind and terminate you. Nah, new, col new colonist joins your colony. Yeah, I'm down. I like his name. I don't know what he's doing, but he's clumsy. I am clumsy and I have accidental issues. Gen 1. First generation clones enable clone union to exist. While they are reliable and producive masses, they have a fatal flaw called the meltdown glitch, which makes them susceptible to psychological effect. I can read. I promise. I can read. <laughs> All right. So that's cool. Let's give this man a spear. Let's give this man a triple necklace. And let's give him some clothing so his nuts don't freeze off and roll off of his body. Because that's always important. A man without his nuts? I don't know. I feel like he would just become very sad. Now, would I be able to survive without my nuts if I was in this situation? That's actually a good question. I don't think I would. I'm trying to think, honestly, hard about this, but... I don't know. I just feel like there would be something missing, you know? If my nuts just kind of roll off and froze. Like, if I just had this witness it, like, if it, okay... If it was sleeping and I woke up and I just didn't notice, then I would probably survive a good bit. But like the first time I went to go to the bathroom, I would probably freak out. I feel like there's like, I don't know, it's a weird momentum thing going on. I feel like it would just my whole body would be out of sync, you know? Also, why aren't we using the ramps here, boys and girls? Like, I, it's clearly there. You know, they just jump off and break your legs. So, I, uh, uh, guys, I made, uh, I made too many boxes. Look at all these guys. <laughs> this is the storage room. Hey. We have a we have a metric fuckload of boxes here. Dude. Having to organize all that must be the worst thing in existence. Like how like for anyone in the military, you know we get like those giant green giant boxes and they make you organize it for no reason for like hours and hours on end i mean yeah you get to steal a whole bunch of stuff from the government in the military but like at the beginning of it you're like ugh like there was one moment where we had to uh clear up our company's like warehouse thing by warehouse i mean it's just like in the like this lot with a fence around it and these giant green containers are filled with like batteries for mvgs uh litters uh, gloves, radio carry pouches, like all this good stuff. I don't know who thought in the Marine Corps would be a very smart idea to have grunts help you organize that because we're thieves, but whatever. So we're in there, we're organizing, and we just see a whole bunch of gloves. Dude, these gloves are like $50 at the MCX, all right? Don't you judge us. I know thievery is wrong and immoral, but like the Marine Corps already takes so much of your money that it gives you back for itself. So when we sell them gloves, Oh, you bet, you bet your took us, our eyes glue were like glow red, and it's just like time for a crusade, brother. And we were like Robin Hood up in there, just stealing all of that good, good gloves, just everywhere, just... <laughs> and batteries, dude? Oh, dude. Dude, I can't tell you how much hundreds of dollars I've spent in the Marine Corps just on batteries for my MVGs, my pack, all this random stuff, because, you know, you're supposed to buy them yourself. Because we don't get funded. <laughs> well, we do get funded. We just spend money on dumb stuff. Because that's just the way it works, baby. Nothing makes sense. This is why Marine Corps don't have tanks anymore. RIP to all the tank drivers in Marine Corps. Either way, besides the point. I don't know if that's actually the reason. But yeah, so like, we're in there, dude. I'm just like, whoa, Nani. What's up with this? And I just open up this container. And it has like, satchel pouches. Like, it has all these pouches. That, like, so you can like... 
put it on your flat. Dude, I will tell you right now. And CLS bag. See you know how much a CLS bag costs, guys? It costs a thousand dollars. I don't know why I waited for you to give me a response when I know you guys. Well, either way, in the future on our stream it will be easier. But like, what I'm trying to say is, a hundred, a thousand dollars, a CLS bag, or like around there. You won't understand how many CLS bags got thrown over that fence and into a car. Dude, the Marine Corps is rowdy. Like, don't leave your if you ever join, don't leave your stuff anywhere out there because people like me are just disgusting. <laughs> like, gross. Gross, but I remember Coombs, my boy. Or, that's his nickname, by the way. Coombs. He would just be like, yo. And I would turn him, he's like, keep a lookout. And, like, our sergeant, where was, like, overwatching, like, you know, making sure we're doing the job. He knew what was going on, bro. He knew, like, a whole bunch of Marines would go to the car and come back. He's just like, bro, it is what it is. I gotta pay these boys somehow. <laughs> All you saw was my boy just started throwing CLS bags over the fence. And, like, someone else on the other side would just, like, make sure no one was watching. And then he would just walk out. Pick him up, go to his car. Boom, 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 boom. Over and over again. Same thing with gas mask, whole bunch of stuff. Oh no, gas mask is serialized gear. Like it's it's serialized towards you. Either way. It was it was good fun. I have a CLS bag. It's cool. I love it. It has like a bone cutter. Like I have all this like medical stuff that you need to survive, like if you get shot or anything. I uh I don't want to sell it. Like everyone's telling me to sell it, but I'm like, it's just kind of cool to have there. Like, ah. I look at that, I'm like, I remember the day of the thieveries of the Marine Corps. Ah. To be young again and i just look at it and open that bitch up and i'm like oh there's so much cool like it has like uh it has gauze it has like uh, the stuff like uh it's the suction thing I forgot dude i haven't been in for a while guys i haven't been to a cls marine in so long but i still remember how to save someone's life but, like there's a thing you like just kind of tape on the open wound and you just suck it up dude i actually now i want to show it to you guys but i can't you know what in the future someone remind me when your boy gets the weefy and I have a camera and stream. I will open up the CLS bag for you guys. It's so cool. It's awesome, honestly. And you like put a, like a like a tape adhesive bandage over the wound, and it locks it down so the sucking wound won't open, just cause a whole bunch of more damage. Stuff like that. It's cool stuff. Cool stuff. Or like tourniquets. Also a needle D. For those of you that don't know what a needle D is, it's uh if you get shot like in the chest or like not the chest really, but like and when one of your lungs gets damaged and it starts deflating um or a whole bunch of other problems involving a lung problem like what i've been taught is if it has a lung problem needle d that bitch which what which means you get a needle and it's uh you feel yourself right now feel yourself with me boys and girls feel yourself right top of the ribs left side you feel that bone go okay look you're for your first rib all the way down to your third one your third one right you're at the third one tell me now yeah yeah all right so you feel it right above the third one is it third one? It is the third one. I'm not crazy. Right above the third one, you just get the needle D. Like it has to be like at an angle above the bone, and you just stab it down, and then it's the suction. Like it, it's so weird. And you stab it into their lungs, dudes. You un you uncap the cap. You're supposed to uncap the cap first, but you know, you uncap the cap, <laughs> stab him in there, and it helps them with the lung problems, like inflates back up. So it's cool. Ah, there's a whole bunch of stuff I wanna. It's pretty cool in there. But I've never done that to someone, though I would be so down to just be like, what the Ta, I saved your life. You have now owed me your life, brother. Oh god, I turned up my uh, AP, RP, whatever, my sensitivity for my mouse. <laughs> now it's too low. There we go. But yeah, I have that. And then there's um burn stuff. Like a, a cream that you put on whenever you get like hella burns. And that's pretty much it. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Just like make sure you serve. Not not really live. It just it increases the chances of survival. Like uh, it makes a golden hour, which is the rule where you. Uh, it's like the time limit you have to save someone's life. Pretty much, it's a golden hour. It just makes that easier. You just put that bitch on them and you help them to get to the uh, evac zone and all that good jazz. I miss being a CLS Marine. Though that stuff was hard. Like carrying all that stuff, annoying. But at the same time, you're like, well, this could save someone's life. So you're like, I'll carry it, no problem. But at the same time, you're like, damn, I've been walking for three days. Can someone, can someone help me here? My back. It's like a backpack thing, and you like strap it onto yourself, or you can like unwrap it and then wrap it into your your uh, your flat, which is cool. I've never done that, just because I hate having things on my flat. Like imagine, like if it's all around me, I could just throw it down. And then go into a firefight, no problem. But if it's on my black brother, I can't, I can't take that off. And so I'm like uneven, and I can't hug the ground if there's no cover. 
Big, big scare. Big scare. Like, if there's no cover... Let's go with a lumber mill. If there's no cover and you have a giant CLS black blocking... Oh, this is the way where it's invisible. I'll send one dude. I'll send one guy so he doesn't get stuck. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, if there's, like, no cover out... And you have that CLS bag and like on your right side or something, you try to roll or do something crazy. It ain't happening, Chief. You ain't rolling with that CLS bag on there. It's thick. It's a thickums. Oh no. Nah, not about it. But yeah. I don't know where. Oh, my brain be thinking. Yes, thievery, Marine Corps. Ah. So yeah, we stole a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, radio pouches, the good stuff. Um, sleeping kits. Like a like a like the uh, I don't know for the people that are are in or still in or you know in right now or were in whatever like those black sleeping bags that are like for winter that will keep you warm and will keep as I said your nuts from rolling off. We stole like three of them. I still have one right now, dude. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it, dude. Like I'm not a camper or anything like that. I hate camping. But, like, if I ever do need to go camp with the missus or someone from the missus' friends in the future is like, Oh, I love camping! I, I, you know, just to be the good dude I am. Oh, bite the bullet, as I say. But I'm bringing that bitch out there, bro. You wrap yourself up, and it's so snuggly and warm. Way better than the brown bags you get. The brown bags are alright, but the black bags are meant for the winter, dude. That, that stuff was money at Bridgeport or just in the middle of 29 Palms when it was winter. Because 29 Palms, it's desert. It gets real cold at night in winter. Dude, tell me why. This is common knowledge. You know that, right? Like, everyone understands that the desert gets cold at night. Dude, the first time I was in 29 Palms, my brain just went full. Just, just like, uh, I can't process. Where, like, I didn't bring anything to my first field off as warming layers. I'm like, I ain't gonna need it. I'm just gonna sleep. Little do I know that we do night ops and stuff like that for training. Duh. So, I was there for the first year, like, the first field op, which was, uh... Two weeks long. Well, two weeks long? Two weeks long, I'm pretty sure. Or it could have been a one week, and then we have a day off, then another week. Either way, long AF. Dude, Mr. Nobody froze his whole soul. I could feel my soul trying to leave my body that night. The first night ever, I think we ran. We we hiked up there. And then we did like a range. So it was like a three-mile run, pretty much. We shot that. Da, 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 and at nighttime... Brother, do I tell you I've experienced the first time ever cold this straight to my bone and I was just sitting there just On fire watch or no, 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 we were on like a patrol and we were like in the middle of the desert pretending to be a patrol So there's a whole bunch of imaginary things from the Marine Corps and I was shivering for uh, I think like an hour or two hours straight Just staring into the void of darkness. I couldn't even fall asleep like my and I was just like Damn I should have been East Coast for those of you that don't know, I should have never even been to 29 Palms because I was an East Coast Marine. I came from Paris Island and then I went to uh, Lejeune, Camp Lejeune. And then you're supposed to go from Camp Lejeune to East Coast, like you're supposed to stay there. But 3-4 just got um, picked up. So, I, so they sent my happy ass all the way from the east side of America all the way to California. And then I'm like, all right. And I was literally like the first couple of Marines to even be there. Like three, four just got built up. So it was just like a bunch of like, we just came from schooling. And we're like, uh, okay. And we're the only Marines here. And I thought I was gonna get my ass hazed. But really you can't haze or get hazed if everyone's there. That was same rank for me, just came from schooling. <laughs> but then they start introducing a whole bunch of security Marines. I'm sorry, I'm jumping from story to story to story to story. I'm just in a really good mood. It's like... 9 in the morning, I just recorded a whole bunch of Rise to Ruins. But what I'm saying is, yeah, like, if uh, if I jump to too many stories, just let me know in the, in the comments. Be like, hey, Mr. Nobody, in the future, can you, like, calm yourself down? Like, can you stop doing crack or cocaine? And I'll be like, well, maybe. We'll see how it goes. But right now, we're going to go full-blown balls to the wall. I'm snorting energy drinks. <laughs> PG-13 energy drinks <laughs> right now. But yeah, like, well, I just got set up, to, we just got built up 3-4 and yada, 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 And so they got a whole bunch of security marines to be our leadership to, like, teach us and all that. Which makes no sense, because security is different than what I'm trying to say. But yeah, yeah, the first night, no one told me, no one told us, really, it's gonna be cold. So I was just out there for a whole week, two weeks, freezing my 
actual balls off. Oh, and then defense. Don't get me started. Oh, we got an event. Oh, get attacked occasionally by heretics. Never will I do that. Oh, an asteroid and other system carrying rare crystals crashes near a colony. Crystals make colonists stronger when they're carried by colonists. That's two, though. Quantum computers have completed the mining operation and has learned to create the shaman stick. I'll go with the shaman stick. I haven't used it still, so I kind of want to do that. So we'll get that. But yeah, as I, I said defense. So let's go to defense story now. Alright, so like the first... Our first chain of commands, we had an amazing CO, and then his second was kind of a douchebag. Like an honest, pogue douchebag. Now, I mean person other than grunt, that's what means, what pogue means. Now, I respect you pogues, trust me. Y'all want the smart way. I just don't respect pogues that go into the infantry and say dumb stuff. That makes no goddamn sense. But either way, I digress. Or egress. I digress. My brain don't work. By the way, we're doing the defense, which is uh, you dig a foxhole, a two manhole, which is what I will say right now is the worst thing ever, dude. Like you're sweating. Imagine you're sitting there sweating, right? You just hike to a spot. And you're like, oh, this is. Thank God we're stopping. Or thank the emperor or whoever you follow. And you're like, cool. Boom. You set your stuff down. They're like digging defense, and you're like, brother, what? So you get your little shitty tool, and then you dig all the way until your top half of your body can't be seen like you know so you're, you're protected for hours and then you sit there in the hot in the heat as you're digging and sweat's coming down and the dust is building up and the dust gets stuck onto your nose and it makes a layer of like powder and residue on your skin that you can't wash off and it makes it very itchy and you start getting even more salty and your cami start locking up <laughs> this is this is it and you're like, well, I can't stop digging because then I'm mean, just going to get bitched at. And then so, boom, you just dig and dig and dig for hours. And you get lost in the sauce and you become a dwarf. You literally become a... Wow, I have a lot of wood. Wait up. I, I should probably be building things. All right, excuse me here, sir. Uh, Base. This does not go up. Let's, let's play Ragnarok for a minute here. So it doesn't. So let me make this base here. We're gonna do something like that, and then we're gonna expand this into like a like a like a down area or something. I don't know. Do something with this, but I wanted to make sure it's in our base before we do anything else. Like I want to make sure it's secured. No one can goon us from this side. All right. Boom. Uh, cut that tree down. We'll stop cutting one tree over here. Don't worry. I'm gonna get back to the store. Don't worry. Don't be like we're gonna forget. No, I'm not gonna forget. But yes, you are. I mean, maybe, but, but I'm not. So let's build a wall. Bam. Boom. No, no, no. We got to do the, 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 the plan. Boom. Let them build some of this up and then we'll get back to the story. Where was that? So yeah, you're digging a hole. Bam. Boom. You and your buddies are bullshitting. Hating your life. Talking about what you're going to do when you get out of the field. You know, good stuff. Same stuff. I remember I was with one of my buddies. We were just digging a hole together. I picked him because he's very tiny. So we didn't have to dig as much. Like he's, dude, he's, he's tiny. He looks like Tom Cruise, like to the T, Tom Cruise with short black hair. It was ridiculous. He could have been that man's like son. Like he could have been his like son that he just like Tom Cruise just went to an island one day and just went like, boom, I have a child. I'm going to leave this child and never come back. That's how close he looks to that child. I mean that man. So I picked him because he's tiny and we were sitting there just digging our holes. And I'm just like, damn. Bro, when I get back, I can't wait to order Domino's. Have an energy drink and play whatever the hell game came out. I think we're. I think I was playing Siege. Siege was the the thing. I've been playing Siege since it first came out, guys. That's the well, that's the game. I come back from the field, play Siege, boom, same thing, different day. Come back from the field, Domino's, energy drink, go to the bathroom, do things in the bathroom that make you know, cause I'm that's me who I am. I was in the military. You know what that means? Go to the bathroom, do your thing. Come back, Siege, boom, 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 boom. And this man told me. Yeah, I can't wait to go back and have my wife cook me up a nice, delicious, warm meal. And at that moment, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I don't know why, but like, <laughs> there was so much jealousy. There was so much jealousy and angst in my voice because I've been eating Domino's for three or four years on the Marine Corps. And this man just goes, yeah, I can't wait to just go back and eat a nice uh, home cooked meal for my wife. Dude, and his wife made the best cookies in the world. I would have killed a man for them. I would kill a man for less, but for those cookies... Oh, they were so good. She made it with applesauce, bro. 
How do you make chocolate chip cookies with applesauce? My life. They were, they were so good, brother. I, I wish you, I wish I could make you guys taste them. You know what? I will ask for her website, and then you guys can just try them out. And then if you don't like it, I'll give you your money back. If I give you your money back, I mean, uh, I'll love you forever because I'm poor. <laughs> but yeah, uh, back to the original story. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're building so much stuff today. We're getting so much done. This has just been a boomer and then just random stuff story. Either way, we're digging defense. Uh, we're done. Everything's done. Nighttime comes when you go to 25%. So people on your fire team, fire teams are made up of four people. And you, you have a set sector. I am here to kill you all. Okay. Prepare to die. You must not see another day. So yeah, you have sectors with your fire team. And you watch it and then half your fire, like one person in each hole goes to bed. That's what makes sense. So you don't, you know, when if you, anything happens, one of you will always be rested. Or you, you'll all be rested. That's how it should be. And so after working and hiking all day every day, this man, this lieutenant, this dumb MF, comes up to us. Our, uh, our, our whole, our whole con a platoon, up and down the line. And he tells me, or tells uh, our our sergeant Leverett, he's just like, there's never, there's no such thing as 25% defense, only 100% defense. All of you will stay awake. And I am like, what the fuck? Sergeant Leverett just literally laughed and just went, you're joking, right, Lieutenant? And he's just like, nah, wake up your squad. And <laughs> I was already awake and I'm like, there's no way this is happening, dude. There's no way. You know what this man does too? He goes back to his little section with this the, the commanding uh with the CEO and all that stuff. And he goes to bed. This man goes straight to bed in front of us. We were next to um What are we doing here? We were next to the headquarters platoon, so like we could see him. This man he goes right the, just knocks the fuck out. Now I'm like, really? And that's the that's the perfect picture of just Marine Corps leadership. It's just so different and buried, and it, it could it just reaches like all the way down the dumbest deepest darkest depths of no such thing as uh common knowledge or just tip uh what was it common sense no common sense at all and then it goes or you get really lucky and you have one chain of command that's just really really good but like that blows my mind so after hiking and digging this man told us to go to sleep and guess what we're doing the next day hiking so imagine doing that with no sleep like at least give me an hour, brother, and I won't complain. But this man just said, nah, none of you sleep on my watch. And I'm like, alright, well, I hope this man dies. <laughs> you know you hate someone. I I've seen Marines just be like, you know, I hope we get into a firefight. Because your ass, I ain't going anywhere near it if anything happens. And I'm like, oh. Dude, there's so, much, there's so much tea when it comes to the Marine Corps. When it goes into, like, normal grunts with higher chain of command. Ah, shit's crazy. Stuff is just ridiculous. Just nothing makes sense in that place. Not one bit. I forgot we got the lumber mill. Is this man okay? Is he? Let me wait. <laughs> guys, wait a minute. I've been, I've been lost in the sauce talking to you guys. It, it seems like the invisible wall has not taken him to the depths of the fiery pits of hell. Seems like he's okay. All right. That's fine. Fantastic. What are we at already? Ha, 23 minutes. You guys just got 23 straight minutes of random BS. All right. More stories. Let's goon. Let me just make sure we got this wall being built. And we can get done. And we'll get back into the stories. Grandpa Pop is to nobody here. Loves telling stories to your young ones. Cheer this Christmas day. No, it's not Christmas, but you know what I mean. I was doing. All right. We're doing good out here. We're doing fantastic. Make sure we cut this tree out the way, guys. All right. How much? How much trees left in that tree? Forty-eight percent. For 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 twenty-seven. Okay. We put more base in here. Boom. Excuse me, good sir. We can't put a base there. Sadly enough. What? I was about to say. I was about to rage quit. Make sure this is uh, all the way. Excuse me, good sir. Uh, I probably just keep this done because I want to build on the road. And I want to make I want to keep this aesthetic. So that's staying like that. All right, what else? What else do we got in the old spank bank of my brain? 
Uh, for military starts. Oh, dude. Well, I mean, it is. This is the Bridgeport map. I guess I should have kept the Bridgeport E, but my boomer brain just goes everywhere, dude. I apologize for that. Every oh, I don't know why it just hit me, but if any of you go into Bridgeport, make sure you get rice and chicken. That the M the winter package MREs are to die for. They give you more calories. They taste so good, and they're actually cook like you cook them with, with hot water. Ah, oh, dude, I remember I was up there in that mountain, brother. And now I was just making my first MRE, and I'm like, what is this? Oh, what are we- Whoa. Uh, we seem to, uh, do we not have flint? We do. We have three flint. Do we not have leaves? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being distracted again. Ladies and gentlemen. Alright, let's knock this down. Let's shake these trees a little bit here. Let's knock this, uh, cut that tree out. Boom. Cut that tree out. We're going back to that. How much wood do we got? As I was saying. I remember I was up in the mountains in Bridgeport. And I remember the first time we ate. And I was actually really excited because I'm there eating uh, winter packers and marine. Uh, the chocolate bar? Frozen. Almost broke my teeth. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, I literally almost lost my teeth that day. What are you, uh... Let's do this. You're stuck, huh? Let me save this man. You know, he, he is a special clone, they did say. Hello? You're free. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Not here. As I was saying, I ate the first time. It was really exciting. Uh, Because I've never eaten that stuff. Jesus. We can't just have a good, relaxing day, get attacked by two? That's fine. And I ate that, and I literally almost had like an internal cry moment. Dude, it reminded me of my mom's home cooked meals so much. I was just like, oh. Because, like, in my household, dude, all we had was, like, rice, beans, and chicken. So when I ate that, it was literally just rice, beans, <laughs> rice, beans, and, uh, and chicken MR. Not chicken. I did have chicken in there, I think. I'm pretty sure. It was, like, rice, chicken. It was, like, nice, thick, porridge. It was so good, dude. Oh. That first time I ate that, I literally felt like I could walk all day. Which I had to walk all day. So that thank thank the emperor that it gave me enough energy to do that. Oh, that stuff was so good. Those MREs were a a money. I remember some marines would take it like uh back to back from the mountains, and they'll bring it down the mountains and then they'll sell them because uh, MREs are like what like ten bucks, twenty bucks. You can buy an MRE online in bulk package for a good penny, but like. If you buy them singular at a store, it's like $10, $20 from one MRE, which makes no sense. But whatever. So a winter package one can go for like $30. Uh, damn, you really be out here frozen. Hey, uh, what's... Oh, we don't have uh wood. Brothers. Uh, brother? Ah, uh, wait up, guys. We have a moment here where everyone can freeze up and die. Y'all sleeping? Uh, yeah, here. Uh, wood? I need someone to do this immediately, or we're gonna get goons. Yep, there it is. Yeah, so you can sell them for a good uh, good bit of cash, actually. Which is pretty smart. Oh. Or you can just sit there. Oh my god! <laughs> can someone, uh, can someone do this? Who's doing this? Esther? Dude, we need this now. People are gonna freeze and die. Hurry. Hurry. Please. My lord. Please. I know I'm using wood for this, which breaks my heart, but I need to, boys and girls. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Beautiful. Alright, come over here. Uh, he's frozen. How much health are you gonna lose from there? Um... Is there a way I can break the ice or move it? I feel like this should be the next thing they do. They should definitely like make you like break the ice or something like that. Hello? Ah. Attack. Wake the fuck up. I repeat, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I refuse to lose like this. Come on. There we go, there we go, there we go. 
Oh my, so the thing that happens here, guys, is that if you have an NPC that's around here, they will attack you no matter what. Like the, uh, the NPCs that come to talk to you or stuff like that, which is a uh, big sad. But that's how it is. All right, so we won the war. We won the battle, pretty much. I need to make sure we do a surgery immediately. This has been a rowdy, uh, like, just the last three minutes of this uh, video. It's just been ridiculous. So we're at 30 minutes. I'm going to make sure we revive her. Everyone heals up. And we're going to call this video. It's going to be a short, sweet one filled with a boomer story galore for you guys. Again, if it was too much jumping around, I apologize. <laughs> Let me know. I've just... I'm in a mood right now. Um, the next one will be a little bit more, more calm boomer stories. More boomer stories where you, can, you know everyone knows what's going on. But right now, I just wanted to goon this with you guys. We, we really didn't do much. This was just expanding the base. I didn't do any of these quests. This was kind of more of like an episode where I get to talk to you guys. I <laughs> just build the base up and do stuff. I apologize. We'll get more progress, I swear. I just didn't notice how fast we were going. I got, I got too lost in the sauce. So we're going to do uh, skill capsule level 3, Lost and Forgotten, probably Happy Pills, do the Fallout Bunker, start that um, that story chain out, uh, get that out the way, everyone's still alive, so we're going to end it off here, thank you guys again, have a great day, next time you see me, hopefully we'll get a launch, love you guys, fly. Bam, boom, fuck yeah.